Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Curtis Ray on the line, and he's the owner over at Suncor Financial, and he's also author of the book, The Lost Science of Compound Interest. Uh, Curtis, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for inviting me, Adam. All right, so uh, I'm excited to get into this book. I have some very specific views on compound interest, and I'm excited that you wrote a whole book about it. Um, But before we get into that, I want to get a little bit further into what you're doing over at Suncor Financial. Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. I started the company back in 2014 on the philosophy that compound interest truly is the eighth wonder of the world. We talk about it all the time. There's memes about it. Everyone everyone uses it kind of just very, very loosely. But the thing with compound interest, it's a science. It actually has a defined formula, a defined mathematical equation. And when you follow it, the outcome is almost identical every single time. And so for the last six years, I really broke down on what is compound interest? Why is Albert Einstein credited for calling it the eighth wonder of the world? But he added, he who understands it earns it. And when I started really researching on how compound interest works, I came to discover that it's not what we think it is. It's not what we've always been told. It's not, it doesn't exist in, in various places that, that, that we've been conditioned to believe, such as the stock market and real estate and various other platforms that we use to try to grow our money. But when you actually understand how compounding works, it's quite fascinating. And so ultimately, the last six years, I've been going around telling the world, which sounds kind of weird. I get it. Guess what? Compound interest is not what you think it is. This is the science of compound interest, and if you follow it, it will inevitably produce tremendously more money than anything else you do. So that's a big kind of <laughs> segue into what I do. I love it, and I um, and I'll tell you, I uh, I have my views on this, and I always said, I said our entire like economic system in this country could be changed if people understood compound interest and the rule of seventy two. That's it. That's all. Like if you could, if we could gamify, and if kids could be taught that while they're learning their name, how to write their name, if we could teach those two concepts, like everything would be different. And I've been saying that for. I don't know, 15 years, at least I've been saying that. Everybody always laughs at I've not. So when I saw that you wrote a book about it, I'm like, this guy, this is my people right here. Like, I know Curtis, even though we just met, I know Curtis. And I'm like, it's so simple. And so one of the one of the real interesting, and when this really hit me was I remember hearing, um, I don't know if it was on an interview or who knows what, but it was Warren Buffett talking about how, how he basically had, he drove that same, it was a Beetle or something like that, like an old car, for years after he was a millionaire. When he first started out, he wasn't a billionaire yet, but when he, he was a millionaire for years, and for him, he said he could never see, like, it was something ridiculous, like spending, I don't know, it was like $400,000 on a car, and they're like, well, why don't you just get another one? And then he did the math of compounding, like, 40000 or $50,000 for that car, and he says that's how he makes all his decisions. So for like a year, Curtis, believe it or not, I did this. I was like, even when I was at a ball game, I'd, be, I'd, I'd do the math on it. I'd be like, all right, that beer costs $7. Do I really want to pay 50 bucks, or do I really want to pay for that beer? Is it worth that much? So I drove myself crazy with this exercise of compound interest. But um, that was the extreme and not what we should be doing, obviously. But um, I love it, and I love the book. So I want to go into a couple of um, a couple of sections. For the listeners, we're not going to have time to go into the entire book, and so we want you to go out and buy this. It's on Amazon. It's really easy to find. Um, I just typed in Curtis Ray in the search box, and I hit enter, and it came right up. Um, the, the Law of Science of Compound Interest, it's really easy to find. Um, so I want to get into a, a point or two here. So Chapter 3, um, Yin and Yang, let's go into that. Tell us a little bit more about that, please. Definitely. And so I have this saying that I always say, always be compounding. And so it's funny that you use the story of, like, should I do this, should I do that? If it's not compounding, don't do it. That's just the, the uh, fact of it. But yin and yang is this, this really unique philosophy that I have on why very, very few people ever actually achieve compound interest. The reason is that inside of compound interest, actually, I'm going to say it this way. There are two growth equations. One is compounding and one is investment. The compound equation is y equals a1 plus or, my, or sorry, y equals a1 plus r to the x. 
And then the investment equation is y equals a1 plus or minus r to the x. So one is continually growing and one is plus minus, meaning you win or lose. And the investment equation is not compounding. It is, it is growth or loss, growth or loss, and it grows. And so inside of this yin and yang theory of compound interest and what kind of sets me apart from everyone else is y equals a1 plus r. That, that is a plus r. That is security and growth that coexist. You cannot have pure compounding unless security becomes, comes before growth. And I know that without, with visuals, it's much easier, but inside a compound interest, there, there is a sequence of events and there is a order of operations. And it's really interesting that A is the amount of money you invest, one is when you start, plus is how secure is it, R is how much it grows, and X is how much time do you give it. And so everyone always, you know, you've been in finance forever. What's the first question everyone always asks you when it comes to investments? What's, what's my rate of return? Rate, rate of return. Rate of return. How much yep, am I going go. to make? And that's what's the exactly first thing opposite. I ask? What's the first thing I used to tell them? What's your savings rate? <laughs> they don't want to answer that <laughs> one. <laughs> exactly, but but inside a compound interest, and why very few people ever actually achieve it is your mm -hmm. first question should be: Is how secure is it? Then mm -hmm. what is my rate of return? Because that's what the math equation actually tells us to do. And so what's awesome about math and science is that it's so defined and so objective but it's boring. It's a, it's, it's a sequence of events. It's, it's orders of operation, right? And, and we want to be super aggressive and we want to go for the best rate, best rate of return. But the moment you put rate of return in front of your security, you're now at plus minus. You can win, you can lose. And so the yin and yang, which everyone's going to, you know, whoever reads this book is, I really break it down. I call it conservative risk taking. It is not risk taking trying to avoid risk. That's what the, that's what the world tells you to do. Go for home runs, no risk, no reward. Go for all of it and then try to avoid risk when you can. No, no, no. It is conservative, risk-taking, security first, then focus on how you optimize it inside of security. Let's, um, let's hit on another one. So let's, let's move on over to uh, Chapter 11, so early adopters. Tell us a little bit more about that one, please. So there's a very small percentage of the population that can even embrace new or evolved. So when things come out, like think how superior Netflix is compared to Blockbuster. It is so superior. It's like, it's night and day, right? It took 10 or 15 years to be embraced by society because that's not how it's always been done. And so yeah. when I come out and people like you and me who come out and say, whoa, 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 there is a better way, there's a more efficient way, and it will make you way more money the majority of the population immediately say, nope, no thank you, oh, I, I, got my, I got my financial advisor, I buy my index funds, I got my real estate, I don't need any more, I'm good. And little do they know, because of this early adopter, few people are early adopters, the majority of people are called majority, uh, late, late adopters, um, and they, uh, they miss out on a tremendous benefit because evolution is constantly happening. And those who stay up with it, are always going to have the best. Those who do what, you know, think about that index fund. The index fund is kind of funny. John Bogle was a, was an, was a, you know, he was a, what do they call him, a, an innovator. He designed something in 1975, the first index fund that went public. The majority of the finance world still uses something that was built in 1975 with no modifications to it. Think how insane that is. Think how much more advanced cars are. Uh, phones are, medicine is, TVs are, everything in the world has evolved but the finance industry. We hold on to something that was invented in 1975 and have almost no evolution since there, even though tons of things have evolved since there, but the majority of people won't listen. They just kind of wait until everyone else does it, so it's this real slow process for people to embrace, and in 10 or 15 years, people will listen to people like me and you who are going out and saying, no, no, compound interest is everything. Charity comes first. All the things that are opposite of what we've been told, but those who embrace um, will have a tremendous advantage. 
No, it makes so much sense, um, Curtis, when you say it like that. And I love, and I mean, there's so much more to this book uh, that I, I wish we had uh, time to go out into. But I do want the listeners to go out and pick up a copy. So a couple of things that I just, I'll just throw out there. So um, you have you have many other things here. So the, the pure compound. I'm just looking through the table of contents. The pure compounder. Um, everyone ends up rich. The evolution of cash value, life insurance, leverage, OPM made secure. Um, I mean, a ton of other content here. I definitely. Want want the listeners to go out and grab a copy of this book. Um, but that being said, Curtis, um, final final couple questions. Number one, um, what are the right types of clients that make sense for Suncor Financial, um, whether it's niche or type or demographic? Um, number one. And number two, what's the best way for people to follow up and to learn more? Yeah, there is good, better, and best in society. Unfortunately, to get the best, you have to be an open thinker. You have to be, you know, you got to be a free thinker and things like that. And so, Typically, my best clients are those who really strive for always finding what's best and doing their own research and not just listening to everyone else, but really willing to do their own research. That's why I typically do real well with entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs are really open-minded. They're just like, how do I do the best? How do I'm the most efficient? How do I lower my cost? All the things that I truly believe in. Um, those are the people who I really speak well to and and, and and we're in a self-discovery all the time. So those are people who are willing to do their own research, read my book, break it down, read it twice, read it three times. And, and uh, you know, my last chapter in my book is called Everyone Ends Up Rich. And you had made a comment at the beginning of this that if kids could learn how to do this the day they learn how to eat, everyone ends up rich. Like, it's that simple. The smallest investment given enough time inside of compounding produces unlimited wealth. And so that's my mission for everyone. Anyone who wants to contact me, I'm on every social media platform, Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm under Curtis Ray, uh, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. I am Curtis Ray. So it's I am Curtis Ray. And then my email address is Curtis at CurtisRay.com. I have a whole team here. We have 50 to 100 appointments a day. You know, I have so many people contact me because especially with this Corona COVID-19 thing going, you know, it's funny because for, for nine months, I wrote a book about how risk is the enemy and it can pop up at any moment in time. And when it comes, it hits hard. And no one wanted to listen to me because we were in an 11-year bull market, right? Everyone's like, no, Curtis, I can make so much money everywhere else. And for nine months, starting last June, I started writing a book about how this day was going to come. And I published my book on March 9th. That was the week the world got set on fire with COVID-19. Like, the universe couldn't be smiling down on me. Obviously, I don't want no one to get hurt or or anything like that. But when it comes to your money and protecting and security and understand that risk is the house and the house always wins, unless you don't play in the house, this is what my book was designed to do and, and really educate people. So right now, I have hundreds of people contacting me. So if you're one who wants to have protection on your money, Focus on compounding, rate of compounding, not rate of return, but rate of secure compounding, which will inevitably outperform anything else you do, reach out to me. And we've got something for you that's going to completely change your life. That's awesome. Well, hey, Curtis, great having you on the show today. Um, Congrats again on the new book, The Law of Science of Compound Interest. Again, everyone go pick that up. And uh, what was the website and all the other things for for people to follow up at? So my uh, my website is compoundinterest.com. Think how crazy that is. Okay. I bought compoundinterest.com and it was available. That's how we that was available. To that was, was available, available as of this year, as of three months ago, or last year, or oh my god, three months that is, ago. Is, that is unbelievable. You just blew my mind. Unbelievable. Compound, compoundinterest.com was available. Like seriously. Yes. So I, I wrote my book, and I'm like, what can I do that's so easy for people to remember? I type in compoundinterest.com, oh. the greatest discovery ever, the most powerful force in the universe, the eighth one in the world, and it was freaking available. I was the like, dot this, is a testament. this is a testament how little people understand compound interest or even care to talk about it. Oh, my God. That's a great way to end this. That's, that's good, Curtis. <laughs> so, hey, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. I'm kicking myself for not buying that domain. Are you kidding me? I love compound uh, interest. That's awesome, Curtis. No, congrats. And congrats on getting that domain. That that's um, that blows my mind in 2020. That was available still. Um, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, definitely give us a subscribe there and leave us some comments in the comment section. Love to know what kind of projects you're working on and to keep the conversation going in the YouTube community. And uh, Curtis, thanks again for coming on the show.